Hello, everyone. Now, welcome to the Multifamily Deal Structuring Monday. Our guest for today is uh, Gary Lipsky. Uh, Gary is a managing partner of APT Capital Group, which buys opportunistic value add B and C class properties. Gary has been a real estate investor since 2002 and is real estate financial modeling certified. He has been a successful business operator for over 30 years. Gary co-hosts the podcast Passive Income through Multifamily Real Estate, where he interviews the top experts in real estate. He is also the co-founder of the Asset Management Summit and Asset Management Mastery. He is passionate about helping others build wealth through aligned goals, transparency, and first-class communication. Here's the interview. Hi, Gary. Uh, welcome to the Multifamily Deal Structuring Monday, where we will discuss all about your first GP, multifamily transaction, or any one of your uh, early deals. Uh, thank you for joining us here in the show. Yeah, thanks for having me, and uh, I look forward to uh, speaking to you. Yeah, so uh, let's start with uh, telling us uh, about yourself. Yeah, um, so grew up in New Jersey, been out in LA for 22 years, been an entrepreneur my, my whole life, running different businesses and everything. Uh, started investing in real estate in 2002, just started slowly, but really got into it at the end of 2016 when I sold a, sold a business and that gave me some uh, time to invest and learn and, uh, and educate myself. So, um, you know, I've been, you know, full time in real estate since then and, uh, you know, love what I do and love to create wealth for, for my investors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where do you like? Uh, what city again uh, you're in? I, I live in Los Angeles right now. I've been out here uh, 22 years. Okay, that's Los Angeles. Then, uh, yeah, how did you end up in uh, multifamily? You know, after I sold my business, there was a lot of different um, things I was interested in, in in real estate. And you know, it's like that shiny object. You hear one thing, it's like, oh, that sounds really good. Oh, that this sounds really good. You know, and yeah. Um, Finally, I found myself to uh, multifamily and it was a good fit for me because I've run businesses before. It's, it's like running a business. It's like running a franchise. So I thought that was that, that was like a really good fit for me and to, to leverage and scale up as well because you're, you're leveraging other people's money and you got to have economies of scale. So um, I thought I thought that was a, a really good fit for me. Okay. That sounds good. Then, uh, yeah, any limiting belief that you have uh, and how were you able to overcome it to get to your uh, first deal? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question because coming from, um, you know, an entrepreneurial world, uh, running businesses, you, you partner with people, but you don't, you don't have business partners. You know, you don't, you don't, you typically don't want to share 50, 50 with a business because uh, it's just hard. You have different, different, you know, different stages of your life and whatnot. And that's one of the reasons I exited from my previous company. So that was a, a, a limiting belief I had because I was thinking when I, when I started out, I was thinking small, I was trying to get like a 12 unit and a 16 unit or a 20 unit and doing it on my own. And uh, Gene Trowbridge said this to me one time, you know, what ha whatever happens, uh, if something happens to you, what happens to your investors and your property? Because that's a real problem. You have no one else to, to take over it. And, um, you know, I started looking at, at, at other partners. I was going to a lot of meetups and I met Kyle Mitchell. Um, and we just, you know, we've been going out to Phoenix together to look at properties and we decided to team up. And it's just, you know, economies of, of scale between the two of us. He can raise X amount of dollars. I can raise X amount of dollars. You know, we could share um, different ideas on a property and feel, feel comfortable uh, investing in a deal. You know, when you're just starting out, you, you need that level of, um, you know, confidence that, that this makes sense. And uh, so that, that really helped. Once I started partnering with, with him and, and other people, um, because real estate is a team sport, so you, you can't do it alone. And, and that was something um, uh, that, that was kind of limiting for me in the very beginning. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I was also curious about the, your story in between you and Kyle. Like, how did you meet up? Then decided, oh yeah, maybe we have maybe good core values or something. Then so at least this will help the listeners because this uh, it will be hard for uh, people like to to just do it by themselves. So it's better to really find a, a partner that 
will be kind of uh, beneficial for both both of them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we you know, like I said, we were going to the same meetup groups, and then um, and we were looking at some of the same properties. So uh, I, I think I, either he was going out to Phoenix or I was going out to Phoenix, and we said let's let's go together. You know, it's it's a mm-hmm. five hour drive um, each way. Uh, let's go together. And you know, when you're spending you know, 15 hours in a car driving there, looking at properties and coming back. And, you know, you really get to know a person, um, you know, you find out they have the same, you know, work ethic, values, um, care for their investors. So that, that was really important that we were building that relationship over time. You know, we weren't rushing into anything. And when we found something that we liked, uh, we, were, we were able to partner up. And then we had two, two separate companies uh, on our first two deals together. And then um, in, in the early spring of, of 2020, we merged our two companies together. Uh, and that was really helpful too, because now we're sending out one newsletter, um, you know, with, with investors we're, we're having, you know, maybe some of them, there was the same investor. So we can have, one of us can have a call with them and, and talk to more investors as well. So uh, it was really beneficial for us, but it, you know, it takes time to develop a, a relationship and see if there's a good fit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's a, a good point. Then, uh, yeah, let's jump into the the for your first deal in a multifamily. Uh, what's the source of that uh, deal? That was through a broker, and uh, actually, Kyle was driving out there with his wife, and um, no one had seen the deal yet. the The broker just got the keys. Um, you know, Kyle, when we go out, we, we call the brokers and he's like, I just, I just got it. You know, you're coming out, come, come and take a look at it. So it's that persistence, um, that, that we've gotten our deals because, you know, we were either the first ones to look at it. You know, we follow up with the brokers on a consistent basis and, uh, that gave us a lead time over others. Yep. That's, that's, that's great. Like uh, that's a good timing that they were there. Yeah. Where, where is this, like uh, the, the first deal? This is in uh, Tucson, Arizona. Tucson, okay. Then uh, how many units was it? 42 units. Yeah, and it looks, it, um, looks like a kind of a old motel, kind of that um, like T-shape. You know, not, n- that, that was one of our opportunities when, when we looked at that property. It, 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 it was in a good area, but, but um it, it hadn't been taken care of in a long time. So we, we, that was a, a big opportunity for us. Oh, okay. Nice. Then this, uh, what's the class of the properties? It's a B, C, 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 C class, class. Okay. in, in, um, in like a B, B minus area. Oh, okay. In a B minus area. Yeah. Then uh, what's the story of this uh, property? Why is the seller selling? Yeah, it, it had an owner that, um, you know, they, she just owned it. She didn't really asset manage at all. So um, she had a, a property management company that was really geared towards uh, single family homes. They had no advertising on it, hadn't really taken care of the property, hadn't raised rents. They weren't charging rubs. Um, they had um, sliding do- glass doors as their front doors. Yeah. Uh, so it just, it needed some TLC yeah. and we bought it at $39,000 a door. I mean, if I, you know, looking back, I would have bought everything I could in that area for $39,000 yeah, because <laughs> it was, you know, there's nothing close to that now. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Like just 39 and in person. Yep. Then, uh, yeah, were you able to get like a decent P12 or end roll? Because knowing the property management is from uh, just a single family. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, we, um, you know, we we painted the exterior, you know, basically as soon as we took over, we changed out the doors to to French doors. You know, we took out the sliding glass doors. And and the thing with the French doors, it matched, you know, it was very important to match the, uh, the same size exactly. That would cut down costs tremendously. You know, so we had to find the same exact doors, uh, change out some of the railings. And just that alone, people wanted to stay. Um, we were shocked how many people stayed. The majority, a majority of them actually stayed when we were, when we were pushing up rents um, from, you know, as, as much as 50%. And we, we've raised rent seven times there twice during COVID um, because, you know, we're hitting, you know, 100%, you know, pre-leased. So, you know, as we get close to that, we keep raising rents. And if we're, if we're, if we're getting those rents, 
we raise them up some more, you know, because it's it's not about necessarily staying at 100% uh, occupied. You want to keep keep pushing uh, as much as you can. And when when um, occupancy dips, then you could you know lower the lower the rent if you, if you need to. But we want to keep keep pushing it as much as we can. Oh man, that, that that's nice. Because I think I attended one of your uh, presentation. Then uh, yeah, first time. Uh, oh, actually, like I, I heard that uh, that uh, yeah, I think you need to kind of gauge let's say if you're nearing the 100 percent then it's kind of try, time, time to kind of experiment like well, maybe let's try to bump it up see how how it will affect right if it's still working then still keep on bumping up yeah you can always back it back down yeah, got... you don't have to keep it there but you want to keep keep tweaking keep testing yes yeah that, that that's really good then uh yeah for this one when you purchase the the property like uh for the T12 and rental did you see any kind of uh, red flags when you when you're purchasing this um really wasn't what red flags it was opportunity you know we okay. saw what the market rates were in the area and we saw where the rent was excuse me and it was it was well below market also on the T12 we we noticed obviously they had um no advertising not that you then not, not that the property needed a lot of advertising, but that was an area that you know if you maybe spend a little bit of money that that can help uh, bring awareness. Um, uh, they were paying four percent uh, for the property management company and no payroll, so they really didn't have someone kind of minding the property. It was just a, a company that just did you know leased up when they had to and whatnot, but no one was watching it, and and so um you know work orders were well behind it's just it need, like i said it needed tlc and you need to put some payroll on there and it doesn't it doesn't need a lot i think we our person works there maybe 16 hours a, a week now um but it it, it needed it's someone to to work with the tenants you know do showings take care of things and um you know like i said we just saw opportunity in there not nothing that scared us away Okay, that's good. Then, uh, what was the original asking price on, on this property? Um, I think one seven one seven five, and we bought it for uh, one point six five. One point six five. Okay. Then the yeah, what was the economic occupancy of the property when you bought it? Uh, I think it was around um, eighty three percent or something. Um, and and for us, we've we've had it about. Pretty much ninety five percent the whole the whole time once we, once we got in there, um, mm -hmm. and you know our underwriting was w w you know under eighty percent the first year. So um, we actually got a uh, an offer for um, for the property at our six year sale price after after a year we put it in escrow. It actually ended up falling out of escrow. It was a ten thirty one buyer. Uh, they ended up doing something else. Um, but uh, yeah, it's been performing, you know, tremendously well. Okay, yeah, and especially during COVID, that you said like you were able to reach that uh, hundred percent occupancy, and also like uh, able to rent, uh, raise the the rent for seven seven times. Right? Yeah, yeah, the cost of living there is is really cheap, and these are these are small units, a uh, um, uh, studio and one bedroom, so there's just very high demand for them, and. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've, you know, we've, you know, we rebranded it to, so originally it was a uh, townhouse East and uh, just not really good name. And it wasn't, doesn't look like a townhouse at all. Uh, <laughs> we changed it to Midtown on second. You know, we put, um, uh, we painted the si two sides of the building, really big letters, Midtown. Um, and, um, you know, that just helped a lot. Uh, new signage there as well. So rebranding, we do that on all of our properties. Uh, so far, it's just a really good opportunity to to have uh, you know better signage, better um, uh, a better draw for for future residents. Okay. Yep. Then, uh, yeah, for this deal, like, uh, how how is the financing breakdown looks like uh, in terms of loan amount, or is it a bank loan that you did? Yeah, we did. Um, originally, we were going to do a Freddie uh, loan, and. Um, and, and we were about 30 days from closing. We ended up switching to a Fannie Green. We got a much better rate. It was a little hairy for a, a little bit, but I think it was 4.52%, um, uh, I believe, something or, or 4.37, somewhere in there. 
and you know, this is a year and a half ago. Obviously, rates have dropped tremendously since then. Uh, mm -hmm. Ten years, a um, couple years IO, uh, sixty-five percent leverage, um, and you know, we just had to do some, you know, um, you know, Fannie Green. So we just we had to reduce uh, water. Uh, at the time, I think it was uh, just thirty percent total. Now um, it's fifty percent, fifteen percent water savings, fifteen percent electricity savings. Um, but the, yeah, it was a, it was a, a good loan, and we had to raise um, uh, about uh, a little over a million dollars. Okay. Then the, what's your capex budget on this uh, property? Just a little over three hundred thousand, and I, I think we've only spent uh, just under uh, two hundred thousand. So we haven't needed to to spend nearly as much, and you know we'll always build in contingency and a little extra money because you never know, you know, once you get into it that you might need to spend more money or whatnot. So you want to have a little bit of padding everywhere because, um, you know there's always curveballs or, or once you start working on a project, something else happens. And it's, you know, you, you might need to spend a little bit more on something else that you uncovered. So you wanna have that protection. And, and thankfully um, we didn't have to do as much as we did like railings, I think um, it ended up maybe being like a half of the cost because originally the insurer said, I think there was a, a gap between um, maybe the, the second floor where someone can like slip under and we just, we had, instead of having to replace all the railings, we just had a, we put like a bar in there and oh, I mean, that just saved so much money. Oh yeah, yeah. So at least there's no no space, at least minimize yeah. that space. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Then uh, for this one, what what's the investor split? 80-20 uh, split, six pref. Six pref, okay. And since then we've been doing 70-30 with an eight pref, but you know, it's our first deal we're, you know, super conservative. We wanted to make sure, you know, um, you know, we took care of our investors. We had a, a 6.75 reversion cap, you know, real, real safe. We, we had an offer. We've had a couple offers actually for the property with a cap of, of under uh, 5%. So wow. that created a really nice uh, buffer for us. Oh yeah. That will be a, a great upside. Yeah. Yeah, then, then uh, I think you discussed briefly, I mean, or the, the business plan. Uh, so were you planning to renovate the every every unit or you're doing like a 50 renovate and leave some some skin, I mean, something for the next investor? Yeah, um, so we, we did a light upgrade and, you know, we were, we were making, I, I forget what we did, maybe, maybe half, half the units. And we're at about our six month mark and we're getting, you know, really nice rent bumps. So we met our broker at the property, kind of walked through and, and said, hey, you know, this is where we're at. You know, we're, you know, the property's killing it. What do you, what do you think we should do? And so he suggested doing a premium unit. So we spent $1,200 more uh, to get a $90 rent bump on, you know, our plan was to do eight, of these premium units. So creating another level of opportunity for uh, the next buyer. You know, we, it, it, you know, the meet on the other upgrades and then also on the premium unit. So uh, mm -hmm. we, we were able to prove out, you know, the rents on those premium units. So, so we kind of took a turn on our business plan. We had, you know, we, we had a six year um, sale in, in mind, but, you know, we were, we were implementing fast and we were getting great results and we were obviously super, super conservative. So, you know, we were gonna take advantage of the market if, if, it, if, it's, um, if we were faced with, a, with an offer that was, that was really good. So um, we, we had it in escrow, it fell out. We just got another offer um, around 3 million the other day. So we'll see if that goes to fruition. We do have a prepayment penalty um, which, uh, you know, for this property, it's small, but still on a small property, it still has a big effect. Uh, so it's just something that we have to figure out either if they're going to assume it or, um, at a lower cost, a lower price or a higher price and, and no assumption. So we're working out some, some details there. Yeah. I think that's a great idea to like, uh, trying to, to experiment that, uh, 
Yeah, adding more to the renovation cost to make it like a more premium. Then see what if, because if it works, then you don't you just need you don't need to do it in all the fifty units. You just need it to maybe sample it with three or five. Then say, yeah, look, this is this has worked in these five units. Then you can do it in the rest of the. Then you will have like an upside on the rent bump. Yeah, yeah, but That's it's very important. Also, you you don't over improve. You got to know your market. So, yeah. you know, like I said, going to premium only costs us twelve hundred dollars to get a ninety dollar yeah. rent bump. So we weren't we weren't going crazy. Just just a couple of tweaks, you know, backsplash, nicer appliances. But it, it definitely created um, uh, a lot more pop for a potential resident. They saw it, they really liked it, and so you know, yeah. they've done really well. Yeah, that's that's really good. Then, uh, yeah, for this uh, property, what was the average cash on cash, IRR, and AR on the for the investors? Yeah, um, I think um, we estimated the uh, IRR like 13.6, 13.7, cash on cash, uh, 7.5, and AAR was like 16 and a half. So, um, you know, not, not super high. We're just, you know, you know, you know, Kyle, my uh, theory is always we'll, we'll uh, under promise and over deliver, you know, yeah. much rather do that than over promise and, and under yeah, deliver. Then, yeah, we're not able to meet the, the expectation. Yeah. yeah, I think that that's, that's really good. It, it, then, uh, then this is a syndication deal. Then, yeah, let's go to the next section of the, the, the show is regarding due diligence. Any, um, Anything that you did on the due diligence and kind of uh, and le- and le- and learned uh, through the process. Um, we we had uh, Shelton Residential as our property management company, and so they bring out a, a, a team of people, which makes our life easier. So um, you know they're doing the uh, the lease audits. Um, they've got their their vendors to you know check HVAC and electricity and plumbing and all those things. You know we 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 scope the uh, you know the plumbing lines and they provide a really in depth report. You know we walk every unit too and and from that report we're able to say okay you know did we budget appropriately for the the things that need to be fixed and we we got like a, a thirty thousand dollar credit I think on, on on some of the plumbing. Uh, stuff, but um, yeah, you. It's really important to have a whole team there with you to support you. You know, you're not going to be able to do it all yourself. You don't have, you know, no, it's hard to have that expertise. You know, so we we bring out some vendors, uh, we rely on them, and um, you know, within a couple of days, we have a really good picture on on you know, does this still make sense? But uh, yeah, yeah. And I think this is also for the listeners too. Like whenever you're doing a due diligence, you need to also bring, yeah, as, as Gary said, bring the professionals there. You don't, you should not be the one doing everything. And also they will know more as well. Yeah. yeah. I mean, even if you're, if it's a, uh, you know, a four unit, you know, you're spending 500,000, no matter what, always still bring out, bring out experts, mm-hmm. the cost, the risk reward, is, is so cheap. So just, yeah, make sure, um, spend a little bit of money. It's well worth it. Yeah, yeah. Don't save, yeah, don't save money up front because if, let's say, something that you miss, it will be a hefty repair if you miss it. Yep. Then, uh, yeah, for the capital raise, I think you mentioned that uh, around 1 million plus, right? Capital. Then uh, how long did it take you to, to, to raise the capital? Uh, it was our first time uh, raising money. I think it took us about uh, five weeks. Um, and really, it's it's a lot of the work has to be done beforehand, educating people, talking about what you're doing, building your investor list. Um, you know, Kyle had done a really good job uh, on that. Uh, I, you know, when you're when you're starting out on your on your first deal, I, a lot of people, including myself, you're you're nervous kind of like saying, oh, well, I'm, I'm doing this, but you haven't done it, but you've got to use some, um, may, maybe something that you've invested in or create some kind of case study, something that you can show people to, you know, to get them on, on board on what you're doing, because it does, you know, some people jump right on board and they trust you and, and other people, you know, take some time to educate them and show them what, uh, what you're doing. And so uh, it's really important. It's, it's, 
it's it's really not that five weeks once you get the deal. It's everything you know before the deal. You know, making sure people you have that pre-existing relationship. It's a five hundred six B. People filling out your investor applications. It's it's that hard work before you get the deal. That's so so critical. Correct. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Let's say, especially for people uh, trying to get their first deal, you line up your investors way way ahead. Like not during like when you are under contract because you cannot just go to an investor saying like oh I have a something then this is the first time that you will meet the person no they will need still need to know you I think it's the no like and trust yeah so it's kind and of uh, yeah. for a lot of, for people that know real estate syndication they're more likely going to go with someone that has done it before so that education piece is so important for for all those people that have never heard of the real estate syndication which is which is so many people are you know don't understand like what what we're doing but once they see it excuse me and they realize the risk re- you know reward versus the stock market they they get really excited about it mm-hmm. yep yep then uh, yeah going to the next section is the closing how much was the overall closing cost of this deal um a small deal, I, you know, um, probably one one percent on the loan, um, some title, some legal, um, maybe another twenty thousand there total. Um, you know, the bigger the deal, the more expensive it costs. You know, okay. on the legal side, you know, for the PPM, for the 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 lawyer looking over all, you know, the loan docs and everything. Um, so it definitely is, you know you know, it grows on, 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 on the size of the deal, but I, a lot of people don't put enough uh, closing costs into their uh, budget. It's really important. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Then uh, how long did it take from uh, LOI uh, to closing? In this? From the time we saw it to closing was like five months. So it was a long time. Um, I think we, you know, we, we, we had, you know, maybe a 60, 90 day close. We, we used our, our 30 day extension, um, we needed that uh, to, you know, to, you know, dot the I's, cross the T's. So, you know, the first one does take, does take time. You don't wanna have, you wanna make sure in your contracts that you do have those extensions built in. It's okay to put more money down as a deposit, um, but, but give yourself enough time because, you know, on, on that first deal, raising money, but, you know, there, there are curveballs that may come about. So. Uh, give yourself uh, room. Don't don't have a, a contract with no extensions. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I think the, the that's a cru- crucial point is you never know what will happen. So always in your PSA have that uh, uh, extension clause that you yeah. can extend. Yeah. Then uh, yeah, we reached to the, the end of the show where I ask uh, these final five seasoning questions to every guest. So question number one is any lessons learned that you want to share from deal analysis, due diligence, capital raise, financing, and closing? Um, you, you know, it's always great to have a, a team, you know, it's not, it's not just you make sure you have a, a, a team of, you know, uh, if you, if you, it's your first time, make sure you have someone that's more experienced than you on your team, you know, lean on experts, like your property management company, uh, your legal team, um, and give yourself enough time to, to get everything done. It does, you know, it's, it's a lot of work. I, you know, for, for some people on their first deal, they might have a, a full-time job going on. Um, so it, it, you know, this is, I, you know, a lot of the courses say, Hey, make it look easy, but, uh, it's, it's time consuming. So make, make sure you, 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 you put the time needed to, to go through everything, read every single document very carefully, particularly that PPM. You know, you're if you're you're rushing through it and you don't understand the PPM, it's going to have things in there that you know regarding payout, every, all these little details that you might not have read carefully, and you might be going against that PPM down the road. So really understand your PPM. Okay, yeah, that's good. Then uh, second question is uh, any recommended books. Yeah, you know what? Um, it's it's not a real estate book, but Crucial Conversations is a really good book for any you know when it, when you're running a business, you've got to have those be able to have those tough conversations either with your business partner or your property management company or a vendor. 
uh, so, so important. Um, you know, the, uh, Joe Fairless has a, a really good book on uh, syndication uh, as well. Um, and we're, we actually, Khan and I are coming out with a book on asset management. That'll be out um, maybe uh, February of 2021. So definitely check that out as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that's good. Then, uh, yeah. So uh, next question is, uh, any recommended podcast or YouTube channel that you're listening to and would recommend? Yeah, you know, I... I listen to a lot of different ones and, and I'll look at ones based on subject. Oh, that, that one's an interesting subject and I'm going to check it out. Um, but I, I like uh, Hunter Thompson's um, Cashflow Connections. Uh, sometimes I'll listen to uh, Whitney Sewell's, um, uh, sometimes Joe Fairless. Uh, so a, a lot of different ones, um, but I'll, I'll pick and choose based on, on the subject. There's so many podcasts out there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Then, uh, and also, I think Kyle also in your as a podcast. So, listen yeah, to yeah that we one. have a Monday, we have passive income through multifamily real estate. So, Monday is more for passive investors, and Fridays we do it's asset management Fridays. And so, we'll, we'll have you know 10 12 minutes of um, you know, interviewing uh, an asset manager. We'll, we'll ask five, six questions, tops, no fluff. We're in, we're out, and uh, hopefully uh, people get a lot of uh, great content from that. Oh yeah, that's nice. Yeah, I'll put that also in the in the show notes because that will be really helpful for everyone. Then uh, yeah, the next question is uh, this is the time to promote yourself. So what's your uh, acquisition criteria for multifamily in terms of location, units, class, and then this is to let everyone know if they have a a deal, then they can reach out to you. Yeah, so Kyle and I typically focus on Phoenix and Tucson. We want to be experts in a few markets and not, you know, there's a lot of markets out there that I like, but but we can't be experts in all of them. So we, we focus on uh, Phoenix and Tucson, 100 plus units typically, um, uh, B and C class properties, preferred 1980s or newer products, um, you know, you have value add component. So um you know, well below market rents, um, you know, maybe needs uh, new branding, paint, whatever, whatever it is, you know, though we look, we look to, uh, we like for uh, opportunities to really uh, increase the, uh, the value of the property. Okay. Sounds good. Then, uh, yeah. What's the best way to contact you? Yeah. I'm on uh, social media, Facebook, and um, my email is G Lipsky, L I P S K Y at APT capital group.com. Um, we're on uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, definitely reach out. And our website is aptcapitalgroup.com. Okay, sounds good. And uh, for everyone, for the, all the listeners, so all the, all the things that uh, Gary will mention, so I'll put that in the, in the show notes. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks a lot, uh, Gary, uh, for being a guest. Yeah, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Had a, had a great time.